Hey guys, it's Mark. Surprise. I'm live. I should have given you a heads up. Okay, so what I want to do in this live video is a fairly comprehensive uh, self-test, we will call it. This is, an, this is informal, of course. Can't diagnose people over the internet. But this is going to be pretty exhaustive. So have you ever wondered if you have ASD level 1, informally referred to as high-functioning autism? formally referred to as Asperger's syndrome. Uh, has your spouse accused you of having ASD level one? Okay, well, you're about to find out. So, but before we get into this test, if you have ASD level one and you're not sure whether you do or not, it's going to affect you anyway. So if you do know, you're going to be able to minimize the negative impact and leverage the positive. But if you don't know, um, then you're going to, run the risk of filling in that not knowing with other more damaging explanations like I'm a failure. I can never live up to my NT spouse's expectations. I'm a disappointment. Um, I'm defective. I'm flawed, blah, 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 blah. So it's never, ever too late. I don't care how old you are to increase self-awareness in order to capitalize on your strengths and work around areas of challenge. So knowing about ASD level one gives you an explanation, not an excuse, for why your life has kind of taken the twists and turns that it has. So we're going to take this rather lengthy self-test uh, to determine whether or not a formal diagnosis of ASD level one should be pursued. And I strongly recommend that you do seek a diagnosis from a professional if you answer yes to most of these questions. So this is going to be a long test. So maybe go get a glass of iced tea or whatever. And I would also strongly suggest that you score. Um, can you see this? I would just get out a real piece of paper and a pen. And of course, your vertical marks, there's four. And then one horizontal mark is five. So this would represent five. So I would strongly to encourage you to just score it that way on a regular piece of paper because it's going to be long. There's, uh, there's going to be almost... 150 questions here. So you're going to be here for a while. So ready? You got your paper, pencil? Okay. Here we go. Number one, are you bothered by clothes, uh, certain clothes, tags on clothes, or light touch? Number two, are you easily distracted? Yes or no? Three, are you poor at interpreting facial expressions? Four, are you bothered by criticism, correction, or direction? Number five, are you hypo or hypersensitive to physical pain or even enjoy some types of pain? Okay, so hyposensitive means um, you have a high pain, high pain tolerance. Hypersensitive means you have a low pain tolerance. Number six, are you impatient and have low frustration tolerance? And that simply means that little things that probably wouldn't frustrate other people really frustrate me. Okay. Number seven, are you poor at returning social courtesies and gestures? Number eight, are you naturally so honest and sincere that you assume everyone else should be that way? And sometimes, are you brutally honest? That's really two questions in one. We'll call that 8A and 8B. <laughs> number nine, are you often surprised what people's motives are? And number 10, are you or have you been hyperactive? Because as some of you know, um, if not all of you know, that there is some hyperactivity in some cases with ASD level one. And there's certainly some attentional difficulties with ASD level one. So sometimes people with ASD level one get misdiagnosed with ADHD. Number 11, <clears throat> are you prone to getting depressed? Number 12, are you sensitive to changes in humidity and air pressure? Yes or no. Number 13, are you sometimes afraid in safe situations? 14, are you somewhat of a daydreamer, often lost in your own thoughts? And number 15, 
are your eyes extra sensitive to strong light and glare? And if we wanted to make a secondary question on that topic, we could throw in, um, is it hard for you to make eye contact? But that's kind of a separate one. I know I'm kind of confusing things here. We'll call that 15A and 15B. <laughs> are your views a lot different from your peer group? Was number 16, number 17. As a child, was your play more directed towards, uh, for example, sorting, building, investigating, and taking things apart than towards social games with other kids? Number 18, as a teenager, were you usually unaware of social rules and boundaries unless they were clearly spelled out? Number 19, before doing something or going somewhere, do you need to have a picture in your mind of what's going to happen so as to be able to prepare yourself mentally first? Okay. So, so far, so good. All right. I'm not going to blow through this too fast because I want you to be keeping score. And again, I suggest you keep score this way. Four vertical marks, one horizontal mark equals five. We got a long way to go. Okay. Let's see. Where did we leave off? Number 20. Do you easily forget verbal instructions? 21. Do others often misunderstand you? 22. Do people comment on your unusual mannerisms or habits? 23. Do people often tell you that you keep going on and on and on about the same thing? Usually your special interest. 24. Do people sometimes think you're smiling at the wrong occasion? 25. Do people think you are aloof and distant? 26. Do recently heard tunes or rhythms tend to stick and replay themselves repeatedly in your head? 27. Do you avoid taking face do you avoid talking rather face to face with someone you don't know very well? 28. Do you become frustrated if an activity that is important to you gets interrupted? 29. Do you bite your lip, cheek, or tongue when thinking or when you're anxious or nervous about something? Or do you have any other kind of a tick when you're anxious? 30. Do you dislike being touched or hugged unless you're prepared for it or you have been asked for it? Okay, so we're 30 deep now. 30 deep, how are you scoring? I'm going to check and see if there's any comments in the in the thing here as we go. So, all right. I told you this is going to be comprehensive. So, we are ready for 31, okay? Do you dislike it when people drop by to visit you uninvited? Do you dislike it when people stamp their foot on the floor? Do you dislike shaking hands with strangers? Number 34, do you dislike when people walk behind you? 35, do you dislike working while being observed? 36, do you drop things when your attention is on other things? Number 37, do you get bored with gossip or idle chit chat? 38, do you dread meeting new people? 39, do you enjoy mimicking animal sounds? I know some of these questions are really weird. Um, but these are some of the subtle nuances that are behind the curtain of ASD Level 1. Not, not for everyone, of course. You're not going to get, you're not going to answer yes to every one of these. Number 40, do you avoid team sports? 41, do you enjoy walking on your toes? 42, do you, uh, do you enjoy watching a spinning or blinking object? 43, do you expect other people to know your thoughts, experiences, and opinions without you having to tell them? In other words, you just assume that everybody's thinking the same thing that you're thinking. 44, do you feel an urge to correct people with accurate facts, numbers, spelling, grammar, and so on when they get something wrong? Okay, and number 45, do you feel an urge to peel flakes off yourself and others? Talking about 
dead skin. I think that would be an example. I know that that one's really weird. 46, do you fiddle with things? 47, do you find it difficult to figure out how to behave in various situations? That was 47. 48, do you find it difficult to take messages on the telephone and pass them on correctly? And 49, do you find it difficult to take notes in lectures? So we've hit the 49 minute mark, 40, 49 number mark. So how are you scoring? Okay. And this is the last time I'll, demo, I'll show you this. I would be scoring it this way. Four vertical marks plus one horizontal mark. This would be five. So this is a long test. And so it's going to be kind of hard to score if you're just going to write down one mark for every yes. Number 50. Do you find it disturbing or upsetting when others show up either late or sooner than you agreed? 51. Do you find it easier to understand and communicate with odd and unusual people than with ordinary people? 52. Do you find it difficult to describe your feelings? 53. Do you find it difficult to do more than one thing at once? 54. Do you find it hard to be emotionally close to other people? 55. Do you find it hard to recognize phone numbers when said in a different way? 56. Do you find it hard to, uh, do you find it hard to tell the age of people? 57. Do you find it unnatural to wave or say hi when you meet people? 58. Do you find it very hard to learn things that are not that you're not interested in? 59. Do you find the norms or do you find the norms of hygiene too strict? And number six, 60, do you find yourself uncomfortable in romantic situations? Okay. So so far so good. Okay, I'm not gonna blow through this too fast because I really want you to get an accurate score. If you're watching this video after the fact, currently at 1.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 11.20.2023, I'm live. But if you watch at any point after that, then uh, stop it at the very beginning of the video and get your paper so you can score this correctly. 61. Do you get confused by several verbal instructions at the same time? 62. Do you get frustrated if you can't sit in your favorite seat? 63. Do you get very tired after socializing and need to regenerate alone? 64. Do you have a fascination for slowly flowing water? That's interesting. 65. Do you have difficulty knowing the right thing to say or do in social situations? Now, you notice that some of these overlap. They're just kind of worded differently, and that's on purpose. 66. Do you have a hard time knowing how much pressure to apply when doing things with your hands? 67. Do you have a monotonous voice? 68. Do you have a tendency to become stuck when asked questions in social situations? 69. Do you have an alternative view of what is attractive in the opposite sex? Okay. So far, so good. Uh, audio is cutting out a bit. Oh, well, that stinks. I connect with about 25 to 35% of these so far. Okay. I don't know what to do about the audio. I'm sorry. That, that's going to really cause a problem. Uh, maybe I need to talk closer. So let's see. We're ready for 70. Do you have an avid uh, perseverance in gathering and cataloging information on a topic of interest? Do you, number 71, do you have a lack of interest for current fashions? 72, do you have atypical or irregular sleeping patterns that deviate from the 24-hour cycle? 73, do you have certain routines which you need to follow? 74, do you have difficulties filtering out background noise when talking to someone? And 75, do you have difficulties imitating and timing the movements of others? For example, when learning the new dance steps or when you're in a gym class. So we're ready for 76. And uh, Merlin says audio is cutting out a bit. So what I'm, what I'm going to do based on that, thank you for telling me, is this questionnaire that I'm uh, going through today, I'll be sure to put it in the notes.
underneath this video at the end of this video. So you, if, if you didn't quite hear some of these questions, you just look in the comments section below this video when I get done making it here and I'll put them in there so you can, uh, if you miss something, you can catch it. Okay. I believe we are ready for 76. Do you have difficulties judging distances, height, depth, or speed? 77. Do you have difficulties with activities requiring manual precision? For example, sewing, tying shoelaces, fastening buttons, handling small objects, and so on. Okay, 78. Do you have difficulty accepting criticism, correction, and direction? 79. Do you have difficulty describing and summarizing things? For example, events, conversations, or something you read. Okay, another way of saying that is with the reading part is reading comprehension. So 79B could be, do you have reading comprehension problems? Number eight, 80 rather, do you have extra sensory, extra sensitive hearing? That's one of mine. I can hear a dog barking five miles away. 81, do you have one special talent which you have emphasized and worked on, possibly to the exclusion of most other things? 82, do you have poor awareness or body control and a tendency to fall, stumble, or bump into things? 83, do you have problems filling out forms? 84, do you have problems finding your way to new places? 85, do you have problems recognizing faces? 86, do you have problems starting or finishing projects? 87, do you have problems with timing and conversations? 88, do you have strong attachments to certain favorite objects? 89, do you have trouble reading clocks? Okay, I'm going to pause there for a second. So far, so good. Okay, 90. Do you have trouble with authority? 91. Do you have unusual sexual preferences? 92. Do you instinctively become frightened by the sound of a motorbike or any other loud vehicles? 93. Do you have difficulty knowing when it is your turn to speak when talking on the phone? 94. Do you have difficulty knowing when you are expected to offer an apology? And then 95, do you misjudge how much time has passed when involved in your special interest? 96, do you mistake noises for voices? 97, do you mix up digits and numbers like 95 and 59? 98, do you not fit into the expected gender stereotypes? 99, do you need lists and schedules in order to get things done? Okay, we're almost there. We're at the 100 mark. Okay. So far, so good. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm hoping so. <laughs> so I'm going to be wasting a lot of time here. Okay. We will now continue. And I'm going to pause periodically because... <clears throat> I don't want to blow through this so fast that it cracks your brain. Number 100, do you need periods of contemplation? 101, do you need to do things yourself in order to remember them? You have to do it yourself. 102, do you notice patterns in things all the time? 103, do you often, uh, do you often, is it, is it the case that you often don't know where to put your arms? 104, do you often feel out of sync with others? 105, do you often have lots of thoughts that you find hard to verbalize? 106, do you or others think that you have unconventional ways of solving problems? And by the way, as I go through these, I'm not going to go through which ones cause problems and which ones are actually assets. So some of these things that I'm listing are actually strengths that come with ASD level 1. Uh, 106 would be one of those where you uh, problem solve in very unconventional ways. That's another way of saying you think outside the box. 107, do you or others think that you have unusual eating habits? 108, do you pace? In other words, when you're thinking about something or when you're anxious, you pace. 
109, do you prefer to do things on your own, even if you could use others' help or expertise? 110, do you prefer to wear the same clothes or eat the same food many days in a row? Okay. So far, so good. All right. One eleven, do you repeat vocalizations made by others? One twelve, do you rock back and forth or side to side? In other words, to self-soothe yourself or to calm yourself down. One hundred and thirteen, do you see your own activities as more important than others' activities? One fourteen, do you sometimes have an urge to jump over things? One hundred fifteen, do you sometimes lie awake at night because of too many thoughts? One sixteen. Do you sometimes mix up pronouns and, for example, say you or we when you mean me or vice versa? 117, do you stutter when stressed? 118, do you suddenly feel distracted by distant noises? 119, do you talk to yourself out loud and other people comment that you're talking to yourself out loud? Okay, so far so good. All right, we're ready for 120. Do you tap your ears or press your eyes when thinking or when stressed or distressed? 121, do you tend to become obsessed with a potential partner and can't let go of the thought about him or her? Call that an obsession, right? 122, do you tend to express your feelings in ways that may baffle others? 123, do you tend to get so absorbed by your special interests that you forget or ignore everyone else? 124, do you tend to interpret things literally? 125, do you tend to look uh, a lot at people you like and little or not at all the people that you dislike? 27, do you tend to notice details that others do not? There's another asset of ASD level one. These are not all negatives. You probably figured that out by now. 127, do you tend to say things that are considered socially inappropriate when you're tired, frustrated, or when you act naturally? 128, do you tend to shut down or have a meltdown when stressed or overwhelmed? 129, do you tend to talk either too softly or too loudly? Okay. So far, so good. Okay. 130. Do you wring your hands, rub your hands together, or twirl your fingers? That's just another example of stimming. 131. Do your feelings cycle regularly through... Uh, well, let me rephrase this. Do your feelings cycle regularly between hopelessness and extreme high confidence? Okay. 132. Does it feel vitally important to be left undisturbed when focusing on your special interests? We're almost there. Guys, hang in there. We're almost done. Only got about another 15 or so. 133, has it been harder for you than for others to keep friends? 134, has it been harder for you to make it on your own than it seems to be for most others of the same age? 135, have others commented or have you observed yourself that you make unusual facial expressions? 136, have others told you that you have an odd posture or gait? 137, have you been accused of staring? 138, have you been bullied or abused or taken advantage of, ostracized, rejected, especially as a child and maybe as an adult at work? 139, have you been fascinated about making traps? Traps. I know, odd question. 140, have you had long-lasting urges to take revenge? 141. Have you taken initiative only to find out it was not wanted? Okay. Have you taken initiative only to find out it was not wanted by the other individual or by you? 142. If there's an interruption, can you quickly return to what you were doing before? 143, in a conversation, do you tend to focus on your own thoughts rather than on what your listener might be thinking? 144, we're almost there. 
In conversations, do you need extra time to carefully think out your reply so that there may be a pause before you answer? Sometimes a very long pause. And sometimes you can't answer at all. You have to slowly process it and maybe answer it later that day or the next day. 145, we only have three more to go. In conversations, do you use small sounds that others do not use? Do you use small sounds that other people do not seem to use? 146, is it hard for you to see why some things upset people so much? And the last one, 147, is your sense of humor different from mainstream or is your sense of humor humor considered odd? So there you go. Um, Turquoise Mama 33, I'm going to put all of these questions in uh, the comments below this video. So you may just prefer to read them than listen to this video. So as a rough estimate, ladies and gentlemen, if you answered yes to a, pro- this is not uh, uh, something that should be done in lieu of a diagnosis, but if you answered approximately 80% of these questions, which is a roughly about 117 out of the 147, then you may want to seek a formal diagnosis because you're in the ballpark range of having an autism spectrum disorder. So this was not a waste of your time. At least you know, okay, well, I have enough of these, but I'm clearly in the ballpark and probably do have ASD level one, but I'm not going to self-diagnose. I'm going to go get an assessment to know for sure. So there's that. And again, if, if you're afraid to know whether you have ASD level one or not, just know that if you have it, it's going to affect you anyway. So it's not like, well, if I bury my head in the sand, therefore I won't have the traits. No. If you bury your head in the sand, you'll have the traits and you'll think that you're typical. That's, that's not going to work for you in your lifespan. I can promise you. So it's never too late to gain some self-awareness in order to capitalize on your strengths and you have Many, many, way more strengths than weaknesses. Okay. So there's that. And if you could not hear all of that, because somebody said the audio was cutting out, um, I'll post it in the comments below. So I'm going to go ahead and end now. And then uh, we'll just be done. And I would be interested in your uh, comment regarding, you know, what your score was. I'd be super interested. Yeah, well, you know what? I didn't quite get to the 80% mark, but I'm a 60%. Da, 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 da. So, okay, cool. All right, guys. Thanks.